something. When you truly anointed, when you truly been plucked and handpicked by God and the hand of God is on your life, things that haven't even manifested yet uh, will begin to recognize the anointing on your life and they'll begin to leap. Yeah. And things are beginning. Inanimate objects will begin to move. Money will begin to come to you. You begin to get position on your job that you didn't even qualify for. And matter of fact, forget about qualify for. You didn't even apply for. But they just came to you uh, with the offer and said, "Listen, we were just thinking, and your name just popped up. Ah, it didn't just pop up in your head. The Holy Ghost put it there." Uh-huh. Because he always looks out for his own. So Jesus here, uh, Matthew begins to speak about Jesus, and he begins to write about Jesus. Jesus is always found somewhere uh, when we read doing the will of the Father. He was in full time ministry. I know he was raised as Joseph's son and he was a carpenter and he knew how to make things. He, I believe he could build a house but that was just so that when he got to the uh, earthly or rather when he got to the celestial place he'd be able to build that house. Don't you remember where it said let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe all also in me, but in my father's house of many mansions, if it was not so, I would have go, told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. Ah, uh, what do you mean I go? I learned because I was down here being a carpenter as a young boy, but now I'm going home. I used to make wooden houses, but the wind was able to blow those things down. But I'm going to prepare a place for you, a place that's eternal in the heaven, so that when you get there, because you got to have an eternal home. How many know that your home? that is in the eternal heavens will be able to stand the storms of Sandy, will be able to stand the storms of Katrina, will be able to stand the storms of Adam, but there's nothing that can come against it because it was built by the master builder. Jesus is a carpenter, but he realized that carpentry was not my job. I know that I was raised under Joseph. I know he taught me how to smooth out wood. I know he taught me how to cut wood and fashion it. And uh, he taught me geometry because there's a certain way that you got to build when you build houses and when you build things. There's a certain angle that things must be at so that they're able to hold the weight of stuff. There's a certain angle in a certain way you got to cut wood uh, against the grain or with the grain depending on what you're making. I understand all that but I want you to know my purpose was not to be a carpenter. My purpose was to do the will of my father and some of you are struggling in your life from day to day because you are too busy uh, doing other folks stuff. You too busy doing stuff from your employer. You too busy doing stuff from the people that are paying you weekly on your job or bi-weekly or monthly. But you've got to recognize that that job that you have is not your source. Uh, I wasn't brought here to be a manager of Pack Market. I know that's what I do because people need food and it needs to be met. But that's not what uh, my purpose is. I know I drive a bus for a living uh, because I transport people to and fro. But that's not my purpose. I'm not here to don't me in a bus driver uniform because that's not why I'm here. I know I work for the city and the city employs me. As a matter of fact, they even give me a good health plan. But you know what? That's not my job. My purpose is to do the will of my father. And I recognize that even though I am a chef, I'm professionally, I'm a professional chef. I went to culinary school and learned the art of cooking. I learned the science of cooking. I recognize that cooking is not just taking some meat and putting it in a pan. There is a science behind cooking. There is a science when you take chemicals and add them to food and it changes the molecular structure of meat. And when you add baking powder and baking soda to things and vinegar, you got to watch your proportions. There's a science behind cooking. So I just don't cook because I've seen it done. I understand the science behind it. But that's not my job. That's not my job. I'm here and I'm here to glorify God. My purpose is to preach the gospel. My purpose is to lead dying men and women to the creator and the redeemer of the world. My purpose is to tell somebody that there is a God in the heaven that looks high, uh, that sits high rather and looks low. So I recognize my purpose is to worship 
and to serve God. Here, Jesus was always found somewhere. He was found somewhere teaching men and women, uh, teaching them about the things, about the kingdom of God. He was talking about the kingdom of God and trying to let people know that the kingdom of God is at hand, that I'm come now to redeem you. And here, as he is speaking, he tells of a parable. Uh, he's always talking in parables because he recognizes one thing, that people don't always get it. I don't hear nobody. I said people don't always get it. So Jesus in his infinite wisdom always spoke in parables. He likened such and such to this. Uh, he likened that to this. In other words, a parable is just an earthly story trying to get a heavenly or a spiritual point across. Because spiritually things, spiritual things are not carnally discerned. I'll say that again. Spiritual things are not carnally discerned. In other words, you can't always understand the move of the spirit. Because in the spirit, it defies science. That's why the folk are trying to get you to understand that we all come from an ape. No, we don't come from no ape. I know some folk that might look like apes. And I know some folk that might act like apes. But I, we don't come from no ape. I don't hear nobody. And if I tell you the truth, that some of y'all, anyhow, hallelujah to God. Ah, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Ah, oh, you can't tell me that the moon comes from the earth when it doesn't have the same molecular structure. Ah, oh, but it spun off of the while the earth was in the revolution, and then a piece of it spun off, and then it, it circled around, and then all of a sudden it just got stuck there and it stopped revolving. No, when I read the word of God, the Bible said that God created, and God said that there be, and God created the moon to be the governor at night, and the sun the governor during the day. Don't tell me about Darwin's theory. Don't tell me about somebody else's theory. I believe Leave uh, the indisputable, destructible, uh, infallible word of God. Uh, and I believe just what the Bible says. Uh, I'm not going to take nobody's theory of how man came to be uh, and how a monkey came to be uh, from a little amoeba swimming in the ocean uh, and all of a sudden through the process of time he came up uh, well then preacher man can you uh, explain the dinosaurs uh, can you explain fossils found in rocks uh, well from Genesis 1 and 1 to Genesis 1 and 2 there's something called the gap theory we're in a space of time when uh, things ruled and rolled on the earth. Uh, I, I know this is not written in the word of God, uh, but the Bible tells us that uh, that there were things that were happening before uh, because the Bible said the earth was void uh, and it was dark. Uh, in other words, it was darkness that had come upon the earth uh, and then God destroyed that earth, praise God. Uh, and those bones were buried in the rock uh, and through the process of erosion and time, uh, things came you have different layers of rocks uh, but then God said after a while I'm going to create man. Uh, man is only 5,000 years old uh, don't tell me you thought you a fossil of a man that was 10 million years old. Uh, the devil is a liar because you can't prove that uh, well I do it by carbon dating. Uh, well let me tell you something about carbon dating uh, there was nothing around that was even around 200 years ago uh, to prove that it was 200 years old so don't come tell me something about some 10 million years old. The devil is a liar. I believe the word of God. And let me tell you something else. There are just some things that you just ain't going to understand. There are just some questions that you just want to be left dangling with in your mind. And instead of you trying to figure them out, what you need to figure out is your purpose for being here. And you might as well praise God while you're here so that you can get to the glory land when it's time. Uh -huh. So Jesus speaks in parables, telling us 
earthly stories uh, to get across a spiritual meaning. Uh, and he tells us here about ten virgins. Uh, five of them were wise uh, and the other five were foolish. Uh, now what made one wise uh, and the others foolish uh, is that the wise were prepared. Uh, they had oil in their lamp. Uh, so when the light would go out, uh, they had enough oil to keep their lamp burning uh, because they didn't know what time the bridegroom was coming. Uh, and we don't know the hour or the day uh, when the Lord shall appear. Uh, but the only thing we got to do is be ready uh, when he comes. Uh, because one thing uh, is for sure uh, that as I believe this word of God uh, that he's coming one day uh, with all power in his hand. Uh, he's coming back one day uh, just like he said if he would. Uh, and he's coming to get those uh, that are ready to go in uh, to the marriage of the Lord. Uh, the Bible says uh, that while they waited uh, and while the bride tarried, the bridegroom tarried, uh, in other words, while he was waiting to come, uh, the Bible said they got restless uh, and they fell asleep. I can imagine them falling asleep uh, with their lamps still burning uh, because the night time had come uh, and they realized that they needed some light uh, to get themselves from where they were uh, to the marriage of the Lamb. Uh, I'm reminded as I look now uh, in the wake of this storm uh, and in the aftermath of all that's going on uh, with Superstar Sandy. Uh, they named Sandy the perfect storm uh, because not only was Sandy a hurricane, uh, but Sandy downsized to a tropical cyclone. Uh, but when she was on her way to do destruction, uh, she met up with a nor'easter uh, and they got together uh, and they tried to do damage. Uh, but God held his hand uh, and said, I'm going to let you do some damage. Uh, you might be a thousand miles long, uh, but you can only go as far as I allow. Uh, that's why you got to be ready. Uh, you don't know what's coming. Uh, you don't know what tomorrow holds. Uh, but the one thing I know uh, is I know who holds tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I heard on the news uh, that there was an earthquake last week. Uh, in uh, we didn't feel it here. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow holds. Uh, there could be an earthquake in the Atlantic Ocean uh, to send tsunami waves to New York City uh, and to cover the Empire State Building. Uh, but as long as my soul uh, is anchored in the Lord, uh, you gotta be anchored in the Lord. Uh, one thing about this storm. Uh, taught us one thing uh, and we got to be prepared uh, and I realized uh, that I was not prepared for a storm. Uh, I didn't have a flashlight. Uh, I didn't have any bottled water uh, and I didn't even have a full tank of gas. Uh, but I'm glad uh, that I didn't come my way. Uh, it got to uh, Pelham Parkway uh, and it stopped right there uh, and didn't go no further. So when I left my house, I saw my car was still good. When I left my house, I could go to Tremont Avenue, and there were some stores open. I got in my car, and I drove to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, and I went down to my job. And when I got there, I went down in the basement, and I saw that my kitchen, all it had was some dust.
that if you got gas, you're one of the lucky ones. And I said, well, let me go back in the 389 gas. And when I got to the gas station, they didn't have no oil. The well on the wet dry. And my car was on the corner of a tank. And I said, Lord, I got to find gas somewhere. I don't want to be a foolish virgin. Ha <laughs> ha! 